So you've got a new laptop and it's probably gonna be Windows 11. Now you can move back to Windows 10 and I think a lot of people have, but we're gonna stick with Windows 11 and sort of go through several different steps. The first being we're gonna remove bloatware and junk and just clean up the operating system, remove stuff you don't need. And then we're gonna secure things. And then I'm gonna show you how I customize my desktop. And then there'll be a couple different extra credit things. First, let's go ahead and get your copy of Windows activated. Thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. You can get 25% off Windows and Office with coupon code TS25. So they've got Windows 10 Pro, they've got Home, you've got Windows 11, Office 2021, 2019, and this is the one I use, 2016, because it still works very well. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, then you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. There's the new laptop right there. It's a ThinkPad. If you're lucky enough to also have a ThinkPad, you're gonna find that this is a very easy process. things you can do right when you first turn on the laptop so let's let's go ahead and get started this is the screen that you're going to be greeted with when you first plug in your laptop now note my screen is 16 by 10 instead of 16 by 9 so excuse the black bars on the right and left we're just going to skip through most of this and i'll stop when we get to something that that matters now we have a choice to make right before you uh, connect to a network if you want to have an online account that is connected to microsoft and you want to use your microsoft account to bring all your settings and everything from another computer onto this computer. I won't judge you, you go ahead and do that. It is a convenience thing. Um, but if you want to have an offline account, meaning that you know your account is not a Microsoft account, it is a local account that is only on this machine, the easiest way for me to do that is just to say I don't have an internet connection and then it's much easier just to skip through all the other online steps. I do offline accounts. If you wanna do an online account, you do you. So I'm just gonna click, I don't have internet down here. I'm gonna lie. Yep, and I'm gonna continue with a limited setup. If you've already connected to the internet, you might not be able to click on, I don't have an internet connection, or maybe a newer version of Windows 11 won't allow you to do this. When you get to this screen here, you could just click on sign in options, and then you'll have the opportunity to switch to an offline account. It's extremely difficult to block all of the telemetry uh, with Microsoft. Luckily, a lot of that's not personalized telemetry with Microsoft. They're a little more trustworthy than most, but I still turn off all of this. And it's much easier just to turn it off by clicking on one and then just press tab space, tab space, tab space, tab space, tab space, tab, tab, accept. Now this is something that's going to be based upon your OEM if you bought a laptop from Lenovo or HP or someone. Sometimes they'll have a screen here that is um, a third party thing. This is not Microsoft. This is not part of Windows, but if you want to sign up uh, and sign in with a Lenovo account, you can. I don't want to do that. Okay, we're greeted with this, the new start menu. Some love it, some hate it. The first thing I like to do is just make sure that the specs match what I've purchased by pressing start and typing about and, and then hitting enter on about your PC. And now you can look, do these specs match? Is this what you paid for? Did you get Ryzen 7, 32 gigs of RAM? Is that what you got? And then at the end, just to make sure everything is working correctly for extra credit, I'll run a benchmark and we'll make sure that it's running at the correct, you know, like expected speed, but that's extra credit. This is the main thing. And then I'm also gonna press Windows key and, and uh, E, click on this PC and just make sure, yes, I have a one terabyte hard drive. That's what I paid for. Okay, so that looks correct. And that's a simple thing to do. You don't wanna get halfway you know, through this list and then realize, whoops, they sent me the one with the i5 or the, or the one with the Ryzen 5 instead of the Ryzen 7. If you have tons of bloatware, you may want to just reinstall Windows, and I'll make a separate video showing the best and you know fastest way to do that. A lot of the OEM stuff is garbage. Uh, one of the things that I really like about the Lenovo software is if there's a UEFI or a BIOS update, it will notify you and then just download it and install it. So when I first plugged this in, that's what it did. I lied. I can't go anywhere without updating this system. So I'm going to go ahead and save this wallpaper, which is uh, from the 
last album I just made. You can grab that on Bandcamp. And I'm going to change this to the dark color scheme. Okay, now I can start doing other things. I'm also going to uh, make these a little smaller on the side by holding on the control button and scrolling down. There we go. And you can make the icons any size you like by holding on the control button and scrolling. There's three uninstalling programs that I recommend. This is the one I use on my personal machine because it's free and open source. If you're someone who's really nerdy and you know what you're doing, then I recommend grabbing this one. If not, Geek Uninstaller is going to do most of what that will do in a tiny footprint. It's a portable package. So this is what we're going to use for this video. And I'm going to grab the zip file instead of the 7-zip because the zip file will open in Windows without having to do anything. We could just double click on it and double click to open it. And we don't need to install this. It's a portable program. You can just run it straight from the folder. And this scans uh, everything that's installed shows you what we have here. The beauty of the Geek Uninstaller is it will also scan for any leftover files and folders and registry keys, just like Revo Uninstaller or the Bulk Crap Uninstaller, except this one is so small and convenient. Now, since I have a Lenovo, there's not a lot of garbage on here. So if you've got like McTrashy Antivirus or Norton or something like that, you're going to definitely want to uninstall that antivirus. Those things are just going to bog down your system and they're garbage. The Windows Defender is a far better antivirus and that's what we're going to use on this system. So you can uninstall any garbage here just by right clicking and clicking on uninstall. I do not need Microsoft Office, so I'm going to uninstall that. But first, before I click on the uninstall, let's hit start and create a restore point. And there we go. Create restore point. Just type RES whatever, and then just create a restore point. On the bottom here, we can click on our drive, turn on system protection, set up how much space you want. I'll do a little bit of space. Doesn't matter. You can allocate as much as you like. That's kind of a lot, but whatever. And now we can create a restore point. I'm just going to call this before uninstall. So after we create the restore point, we can uh, start messing with stuff. Not too big of a deal, but I recommend creating restore points before you do anything major or before you start uninstalling things you don't understand. So uninstall. Office is going to go away. And then we'll start thinking, what's next? If you do not know what something on the list is, like, what is clean your device? It's got an L, so it's probably Lenovo. Um, if you don't know what it is, before you uninstall it, maybe hit start and just type whatever it is, clean. There it is, clean your device. Let's open it up and see what it is. So clean your device. It lets you, oh, this is pretty cool. So you can basically disable all the functionality of the computer for a minute, two minutes, five minutes, so that you can give it a wipe down. Don't put any like liquid on here. Just like get your towel a tiny bit damp from alcohol or whatever, and then clean your device. So I'm gonna leave clean my device on the computer. I'm not gonna uninstall that. Doesn't seem like it's gonna get in the way of anything. And Lenovo Vantage, I'm gonna leave on the computer, but I'm gonna set it up so that it does not start with Windows. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But for now, we'll just go through, uninstall any junk or bloatware, or anything that, you know, here that you're like, what is this? Leave some of the system stuff, like the Microsoft stuff or whatever, just leave that on there. I don't use Microsoft OneDrive. If you have a Microsoft account and you use their cloud services to back things up, then keep it. But I'm gonna uninstall that. After it installs, it found some traces here in the, in the you know, files and folders. Remove those traces. I do not use OneNote either. So I'm gonna uninstall that. This one had a bunch of registry entries left over, like the OneNote. It says that there are uh, traces left, and this is why we created the, the backup. I'm gonna go ahead and finish and have it remove all those registry entries just to keep the system clean. But if there are any issues, then we can always restore. All right, so we've been uninstalling desktop applications, which are the old school apps. There's also Microsoft Store apps. Click on that and look at all this stuff here. So there's a bunch of stuff here. Do we need or do we not need this stuff? Do we need Dolby Access? I don't need that. And there's going to be more stuff here. Glance by whatever that is. We don't need that. I don't know what that is. Do you use the mail that comes with Windows? I do not. You know, you can uninstall everything from right here inside the Geek Uninstaller. But if you just hit Start, click on All Apps, you can scroll through here. And some of the things that were already removed are still going to show up here. So I usually just like to do this manually. I used to do this by running commands in the PowerShell, but I don't do that anymore. You need to leave Edge and the store on here, though, because that can break a lot of things if you uninstall these two. There's just too many things that are built into Windows that are reliant upon these two stupid things. So, yeah. Now, you may think that Mobile Plans has something to do with, like, your Wi-Fi. It does not. You can uninstall it. All right, so we've uninstalled a bunch of stuff. Uh, next thing I like to do is just run a Windows update by hitting start and typing update. Check for updates. All right, we are going to go ahead and do a Windows update, let it reboot or whatever, and then we can look one more time just to see if anything else has been installed 
during the Windows update. Yeah, let's go ahead and install all this stuff right now. Okay, so some of the stuff didn't work, but we can do a restart now and just finish up. Just go through the updates. This could take a minute. I'm going to get another cup of coffee, and I am going to be jittery as hell. Okay, once we've restarted, I'm going to go ahead and click on Start and do another update. Just keep doing this until all the updates are done. Have fun. It's a good thing I love coffee. Another restart. Well, the update's finally finished. I'm just going to do one more thing. Hit Start and just see if there are any new apps I want to get rid of. Just scroll through. There may have been something installed by the updates. Sometimes the updates will install things that you've removed. It's kind of annoying. But that's one of Microsoft's things. They're like, hey, we see you didn't have our Candy Crush advertisement. We want to make sure you have that because we got paid. Just scroll through, especially here, and just see if there's anything you want to right click and, and get rid of. Let's start installing a few things. We're going to head over to Ninite.com. There are alternatives to Ninite, but this one covers the basics and it's really easy to use, so I still use it. I grab Firefox. Firefox has a really nice PDF editor built in now. So you can actually edit your PDFs inside Firefox, meaning we don't need a PDF editor unless you really want one. Again, this list, you just grab anything you like. I grab VLC because I uninstalled the other media player. And I also like the K-Lite codec packs just to make sure I have all the codecs installed. And I'm not gonna install Steam, and I'll tell you why. I'm also not gonna install any of these, but I am gonna install 7-Zip, and we don't need Microsoft Security Essentials because it's already built in. If you want additional stuff here, uh, Avast and AVG are okay. Bybot's okay. These are all like okay. So uh, Malwarebytes is the one I use and I pay for the premium on that one. It's good, works fine, but Microsoft Security Essentials is very good these days. Better than the junk that's usually pre-packaged with the laptop. So once you've checkmarked everything you like, just scroll down to the bottom and click get your Ninite. And this is gonna download an installer that will install all of these programs to their default location. And we can show the details here. It's downloading one thing at a time and installing it into the program files or program folders. Now, the reason I don't like to install Steam and stuff this way is because I like to put those into a specific folder. I create a games folder, so I want to install those separately so I can change the installation location. Later in the video, for some extra credit, I'll give you a few key Firefox security plugins that I think you should be running, but that'll be later in the video, part of the extra credit. I like to run a VPN, especially if I'm going to be doing torrenting or something like that. Uh, VPN essentially protects you on the internet. It makes it so that your ISP and other prying eyes cannot see what you're doing. This is not sponsored. I use private internet access every single day on multiple machines. If you use our code and then click on get PIA VPN, you can see here you can get it for $2.03 a month. Now there's other VPNs out there that a lot of people yell and scream about that you know are, are very good VPNs but this one is so fast. I have not found a VPN that is faster for the money and they also have a perfect track record. There's never been any leaks. So this is the VPN I would recommend that you install, especially if you're out and about, you don't want anybody uh, being able to like see what you're doing on your computer and this will encrypt and protect you from any prying eyes. So just install this. So I keep it on a lot of the times, but you know, toggle it as, as needed. But that's my VPN of choice. Next up when it comes to security, if you click down here on the bottom, we can click on the Windows Security. Now it may tell you, hey, you need to log into our service, you know, sign in with Microsoft. It'll give you a warning sometimes, but you don't need to sign in with Microsoft. You can tell it to be, you know, be ignored. And just make sure that all your virus stuff is turned on. Click on Manage Settings, make sure all that's on. Next up, I like to mess with my user account control. Just type UAC, and change user account control. I bring that all the way up. Now, this is going to uh, frequently pop up on the screen and be like, hey, this program wants to install. Hey, this program wants to make a change. Is that okay? Hey, yes, it'll do this. See, this is going to happen a lot, but it is a very, very effective layer of protection. And it's very basic and easy to set up. So do that. Now, the other thing you can do with privacy and stuff is just check your privacy settings by clicking here, clicking on the cog, and then scrolling down to privacy and security. Now, you can go through here and just make sure that everything is the way you like it. And this is gonna be different for you know each person who's using this. We already have uh, device encryption going on here, but there's also something called BitLocker, and I recommend you turn this on. When you click on Turn On BitLocker, it will encrypt your drive, you'll need to put in a password and that sort of thing, but this will be nice if someone were to steal your laptop, they won't be able to log into it without that password, and then if they take out the hard drive and put it into their own drive, or put it into their own machine, the drive is going to be encrypted. 
Without that password, they will not be able to access the contents of the drive. And also when you're selling your laptop, it makes it um, more effectively protected because the data on the drive is always encrypted. And come down to permissions. And I like to make sure my location services and stuff are off. I don't want you know any location tags on anything I put online, just, just as a security feature. But check through these permissions. So I just come through each one of these. It's a little time consuming, but send data to Microsoft. No thank you. All right, so once you're finished going through those few things, you'll have a more secure operating system. And I've made a video covering in more detail some things you can do to help keep yourself secure in Windows. And that video is linked in the description. We have a couple different Office options. LibreOffice should be the primary option for most people. It is a full Office suite, just like Microsoft Office. But if you only need a few of the applications, then there's something called only office and it has better compatibility with microsoft office and it looks a little more familiar to microsoft office but it only has a few different programs like it has a spreadsheet and i believe it has a publisher application i don't use this when i use LibreOffice, and then it also has a word processor but it does have deeper compatibility so make your decision and then you can uh, you can download one of the two now extra credit part two for Firefox, there's a couple different plugins that we can install, or they call them extensions. For blocking ads, I prefer AdGuard or uBlock Origin. Uh, they're both very, very similar in functionality. Do not use AdBlock or AdBlock Plus because they take payments from companies to allow ads through the filter, which is garbage. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Yes, I wanna allow this to run everywhere. And I've used it for years, so I do trust them. Next up, Privacy Badger. This helps to block uh, a whole bunch of stuff that follows you around the web like cookies and stuff that follow you all over, all over Google and Facebook, and all, all these things to run everywhere. And the last thing is also from the same company, uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and this is HTTPS everywhere. It just makes sure that any website that you're going to, if you just type like add-ons.mozilla, it makes sure to add on HTTPS and forces you to go to HTTPS. So those three are a good start. And then after that, you can add your own extensions and we don't need to cover all of those, but that'll get you a very nice start. Let's take a look at the File Explorer. Clicking on this, or you can also press the Windows key and E to bring up a File Explorer quickly. Just do a few basic things to make this more better. Click on the dot, dot, dot up here. Click on Options. Now we can choose whether or not we want to come to Quick Access or this PC. I think most power users are going to want to go to this PC right off the bat. And then click on View, and I always do Show Hidden Files and Folders. Hit Apply. Now, when we open this up again, instead of going to the Quick View, it's gonna go straight to my computer. Now, there's something weird here. See this little checkbox over here? This feels weird to me. This is um, something that's been around with Windows for a while, but, but I don't like it. So come over here to show, and it's under view, and then show, and then just undo the item checkboxes. Now also, have you noticed how big everything is? It's like it's made for a touchscreen or something, but this is a desktop operating system, so I don't need this much padding in between everything. Luckily, we can go and click on view, and then click on compact view, and now it's more like it used to be, which is the way I like it. So that's all I'm gonna do for my Explorer for now. This is actually very functional, works just fine for this part of the extra credit, that's all we're gonna do. Now, as far as customizing the taskbar, you may have noticed everything's in the center, like we're using a Linux distro, like, or we're using Mac OS. If you want it to be back on the left, you can click on the taskbar options, then click on taskbar behaviors, taskbar alignment, and do it on the left. All right, so that's good for now. You may notice my icons are really big and bubbly, and that is because for the ease of the video, and I'll scroll down and show you, I am running at 150%. So there's 100%. See, it's a little bit smaller. It's a small screen, so I have it turned up so everyone can see everything that's going on. But yeah, I do have to run scaling on this. I'll probably realistically run it at 125 on my own, but so everyone can see it, I'll run it at 150. And that's why those icons are so large down there. If you're happy with the way everything works now, you're done. But if you want a different experience with the bar down here on the bottom, well, we can install a more old school and more functional, in my opinion, Explorer with a new start menu and everything like that. So Explorer Patcher is on GitHub. Create a restore point before you install this because it's gonna mess with stuff. And sometimes the new Windows updates will break this. So create, uh, there we go, this one, create restore point. There are some other options like start all back, which are pretty good, but they cost money. This one is free and OpenShell or Classic Shell is not available yet for Windows 
11, but this one does a pretty good job. So Explorer Patcher Setup. Now this is going to take a minute. It's going to do stuff. Do not panic. You can't see what's going on because it has to, you know, close down Explorer, which would be all of the bars and everything. Uh, when this shows back up, it's not finished. Just wait. See, if you click on Start, nothing's happening because it's still installing. Just give it a second. Once all of your icons and stuff show back up, then we're in business. Right click on this and click on Properties. Now we can choose our task you know, menu style, our taskbar style, Windows 10 or 11. And I hit the Start button and this is the Windows 11 style, which I find to be whatever. You know, it works. It's, it's there. But if you want to go back to the Windows 10 style, you can do that. There we go, the Windows 10 style with all this stuff pinned over here. I'm just going to unpin all this nonsense. You can pin other things here if you like. I didn't find the Windows 10 or the Windows 11 start menus to be that functional, but I mainly only use them to hit start and then type whatever I'm looking for. So yeah, there's the Windows 10. You can still type and it brings up a Windows 11 style thing. So it's almost better just to keep it on Windows 11. It's kind of weird. Oh my God. Where did Disney Plus come from? I totally missed them. Do I, why do I want Instagram and TikTok on my machine? Hell no. Whew, that was close. The apps almost got me. All right, click on File Explorer. And this is very important. Disable the Windows 11 context menu. Oh, there we go. Isn't that beautiful? It's gone. Let me show you how, how gone it really is. Go to Program Files. I'm just going to find something. Right click on it. Oh, it's the old school menu. Except we still have these goofy rounded edges, which don't make any sense for a desktop operating system. Everything's going to be so round in the future, we'll just have to buy circular monitors. All right, so that's good. If it does not work when you, you know, sometimes you put a check mark and you right click and it's like still the Windows 11 menu, just click on Restart File Explorer. Give it a second. And once it restarts, it'll be OK. So go through this and configure it to your liking. Show the weather. No, thank you. Now, the other thing that's beautiful about this is it allows us to have the Windows 10 style functionality over here. For instance, before you click on this stuff and it brings up all of this nonsense, you know, where you have, it's like a mobile menu, but we don't want that. We want a separate menu for our Wi-Fi, just like Windows 10. So much more functional to be able to click on one thing and have it respond. So that's what I want. The next bit of extra credit, I want to replace the Windows audio properties of the little Windows audio icon here that doesn't have much functionality. It's okay, but I want to replace it with something that's way better. So click on your Microsoft Store, let that open up, and type Ear Trumpet. Here we go, Ear Trumpet app, and get it. You're going to love this. All right, open it up. It says it offers in-app purchases, but I've never seen anything. If you look right here, we now have an Ear Trumpet volume, and we also have a Windows volume. I want to swap these because I want the Ear Trumpet volume to be down here on the bar always. So. Click and drag this over and drop it. And then make sure you've grabbed the ear trumpet one by hovering over it until the, the, the words come off. And then just drag it over here. You can rearrange it as you like. So I always install ear trumpet on my machines. It's a great little application that does a lot more than just the Windows version of whatever. I feel like the Windows thing should have all this in, you know installed. All right, control shift escape and then say yes to bring up the task manager. Click on more details here. Now here's our task manager. I want to see what's starting with my computer and anything that's enabled. I'm going to click on status here to see what's enabled and what's disabled. Okay, Discord, I do not need that starting with my computer unless you're someone who's always on Discord. But I do want Windows security notifications. All right, so go through this. Most things are disabled, that's good. Now if you have a, you know, a laptop that had all kinds of bloat and stuff on here, you may notice something you're like, what in the heck is that? So just anything here that you don't need starting with your computer, you can disable it. Okay, the last bit of extra credit. Now that we've got everything installed and all that, if you wanna double check and make sure that your system is good, has good cooling and all that stuff, we can download a benchmark program like Cinebench. All right, I'm gonna grab Cinebench R23. All right, getting the Cinebench for Windows. And the reason to run a benchmark is just to make sure that your system is performing as you think it should be performing. I'll open it up with 7-zip here, and I'll just do a quick desktop thing. All right, drag and drop it into that folder there. I'm gonna run Cinebench, and you'll also be able to hear, maybe your laptop gets way louder than you thought it would. You know, any of those type of deal breakers, it's good to know that, you know, in the first month, then, the, you know, like three or four months down the road when you can't return the laptop anymore. All right, accept this. 
multi-core, single core. Let's do a multi-core and just see how it how it stacks up. And then we can compare it with similarly specced machines to make sure that it's performing as expected. My microphone is right beside the Lenovo laptop. So you're gonna hear how loud it gets with the fans on. But it's a very quiet, very quiet computer. I'm just gonna wait until it's finished. Let's run a few different tests. It'll take about eight to 10 minutes. So just let it keep going. The fan's getting a little louder. You can hear it maybe. And maybe not, it's pretty far in the background. But yeah, this fan is very quiet compared to a lot of laptops I've heard. So I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so my Cinebench has finished. Score of 99.24, looks a little low to me. I just came over here to notebookcheck.com. They have a bunch of different uh, benchmarks here. Here's the uh, 6800U, 6850U, 1032 points. You know, that's pretty good seeing as how silent this is, very similar. So I think that's gonna be close enough. It's a little lower than this, but that's the median score. And again, it's nice and quiet, so we'll call that good. And the last bit of extra credit we'll do is download a program made by Microsoft called Power Toys. I click on Install Power Toys. It's available on GitHub. This link will be in the description here. Click on the releases here. And scroll down a little bit and we'll see all this nonsense and all this important stuff. And I'm going to grab the X64 version right here. I'm going to install this and I'll show you a few things that it does. Yep, agree. Yes, yes. All right, Power Toys will install down here and you can find it down here. This is pretty cool if you want to like have a color picker, it'll pick whatever color on your desktop. It's pretty cool. You can open it by setting a hotkey. Control Shift C is what it is now. Fancy Zones is my favorite thing, especially if you have multiple monitors. Open Settings of Fancy Zones. And then you have to come down and click on Layout Editor. And what we can do is essentially create new snapping areas. So our main uh, our main thing here, we can create a new layout. I like to do canvas rather than grid because it allows us to have overlapping zones. And I'm just going to call this my 16 by 10 layout because it's a 16 by 10 monitor instead of a 16 by 9. I'm going to create that and then just add some zones. I'm going to do a half. I could do the math if I wanted to. Add another one. Oh, look out. Put this one over here. I'm doing it quickly just so you can see. There we go. 640 by 760 on both sides. Uh, that'll just be left and right snapping. And then I'm going to create one just for full screen. And there we go. We'll have those. We can snap left, right, and full screen. If you want to get crazy, you can have more zones. Like we could have a zone that's like, all right, this. If we just want that and then have like a little something on the side. Why not? I don't need this many zones, but I'll just show you how it works. Save and apply. There we go. And you can create custom zones for different monitors. Note that when you sometimes update Windows, this will get messed up, so you just have to go back into your layout editor and tell it to do it. Okay, you have to come down here, scroll down, and do Override Windows Snap. There we go. And I like to do Move Zones uh, across all monitors because then it'll allow me to continue to press the snap and write, and it'll go from one monitor to the next if I have multiple. Now let's try snapping this around. There we go. Snap it at full screen. Snap it right. Snap it left. All right, so we've got the zone set up now. I can put this one here, and then I can grab this one and put it all the way over in the corner. There we go. Those are the zones I set up. I, uh, that's Power Toys and Fancy Zones. I would recommend coming into your, your Power Toys and then scrolling down to Power Toys Run. This allows you to press the Alt and Space button and bring up sort of like Launchy back in the day. But, you know, the Windows key allows us to do basically the same thing. So I turn this off because sometimes Alt and Space do other things. So it's up to you. But you can look through all the different things here. Screen Ruler is pretty cool. So there you go. You now have a more functional, better version of Windows 11. And, uh, you know, just to say thanks for watching all the way through, let's go ahead and give you a discount on our mother membrane keyboard. If you use the coupon code Happy Keyboard, I'll give this to you for half price right now. So the keyboard is a membrane keyboard. I went to China myself to make sure I found the best membrane. It feels nice and poppy. I really like the way this keyboard feels, uh, but it's also water resistant. So a spill is not gonna bother this keyboard. And then we have several different colors you can cycle through by pressing the function key and tab to cycle through the colors. No ridiculous, you know, color effects, just very nice, tasteful colors, braided cable. 
And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to sell this too hard because the price is is, is too good. So head, head over to epicpants.com. The link is going to be in the description. Happy keyboard and get this for, that's maybe a little bit too low. All right, half price. I already said it. And then last but not least, if you like chip tunes and old school style DOS music, my new album has just come out and you can head over to Bandcamp and grab that or check it out. And that link is also in the description. If there are any really cool programs or if you have any really awesome tips for Windows 11 uh, and new laptops, let me know about those in the comments as well. I'll see you there. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the stupid bell thing because YouTube won't tell anybody about the videos unless you do that. All right, I'll see you in the comments.